Okay, so this first problem, we're graphing y equals 2 to the x power. This is an exponential function, and you can set these right up on your graphing calculator, um, and then that'll give you always a sense, if you, know, if you forget how these things work, um, to think about some of the intuition here. Just press the y equals button, 2, and then to the power of, that's this button over here, x, this button right here, and press enter, and you're done. When you graph it, you can see how this how this graph kind of grows, and they and they grow amazingly fast. The basic idea is that, right, as x gets into the negatives, your number is reducing, approaching zero, but never touching it. And as x is increasing, your graph when it's a positive base, um, and when the exponent is positive, is actually increasing, right? So we can mess with the base and the exponent, but if all things are positive, this is what you'll see. And if you want to see what happens when, for example, your base is negative, we can just put second insert and then play with this function a little bit. Now we have a negative function, and you'll see how the shape of it changes. So, you know, you often are given questions where you're asked to analyze um, these kind of functions and analyze how different parts of the function uh, being changed can change the shape of the function. So you can play around that in your graphing calculator to kind of gain some intuition. Now specifically here they want us to graph this by hand in this interval where x is larger than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 3. So a good approach when you see that is just to pick the, in the integers um, in that interval. So when x is negative 1, when x is 0, when x is 1, when x is 2, and all the way up to and including 3. So what you can do to, to figure this out exactly is set up a table. We have the x values here, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then over here you'll have the y values, where y is 2 to the x. So plug negative 1 in. We have 2 to the negative first. Remember, that's 1 over 2, or 1 divided by 2. 2 to the 0 power, where x is 0, is equal to 1. 2 to the first is equal to 2. 2 to the second is equal to 4, and 2 to the third is equal to 8. So these are your points, right? Your first point is going to be negative 1, 1 half. So we plug that in. Negative 1, let's say this is the y-axis 1 and 2 and 3. So we have negative 1, 1 half right there. 0, 1, right? When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2, right? When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, it's 8. So count there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So right here. And then you would just connect this right here. And you can just graph the interval right there. It should be a little bit smoother, I hope, when you draw it. But um, all right, this graph would keep extending, but you only need to draw it there. I just want to talk for a moment about, again, what's happening here. Think about why this approaches, right, 0 but it approaches zero but never touches it. Uh, you can think about a couple of extreme cases, right? If we have negative two, negative three, negative four, that means this is when x equals negative four, y equals two to the negative four, and that's just one over two to the fourth, right? Or one over 16, small number. But jump ahead further down. Let's say you have eventually dot, 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 right? You reach x at the negative 100. Well, this is going to equal, when x equals negative 100, you get y equals 2 to the negative 100, and that's 1 over 2 to the hundredth, an enormously tiny number, right? Oops. And here, I guess, let's see if we can model that in the graphing calculator. If you have 1 divided by 2 to the hundredth power, right? Here, it's seven, about 7.8 times 10 to the negative 31st. So that's, right, that is 0 .000 30 times, right, 7, 8, a tiny, tiny decimal, but not 0. So in fact, we get closer and closer to 0 but never hit it because these negative exponents give you smaller and smaller decimals. It's dividing by the base over and over, dividing 1 by the base over and over and over again. So we have... Um, when x is negative 4, it's 1 over 2 to the 4th. When x is negative 5, we have 1 over 2 to the negative 5th, all the way on, and so forth. Uh, in the reverse, and if, we, if we were to extend the line here to the right, which we're not doing in the problem, but if we did, you can imagine the rate of growth. This, it grows exponentially, and you can see how steep it would get. In fact, I should draw this a little bit better, right? Just 
the steepest will go incredibly fast. Um, already at four, we're at, when x is four, we're off the grid to 16, double in height, maybe right up here. Okay, so let's keep going.